Hi everyone, welcome to tonight's webinar. I'm Sharon Bond, Director of the New Student and Family Programs at um, the University of Denver. Um, can someone just put a little um, note in here to make sure that you can all hear me okay? Yep, great, thank you very much. Okay, and with me on tonight's webinar as moderator is Beth Goad, Assistant Director of Family Programs. Uh, to start us off, I'm going to give you a few updates about orientation and move-in. And as you start to think of questions to ask, go ahead and add those to the Q&A button on your screen. Beth will be reading through those as they come in and we'll answer as many of your questions as we can. Um, this webinar is being recorded, so you'll be able to watch it again by going to our website, crimsonconnect.du.edu slash NSFP. And let's go ahead and get this started. Okay, who are we? Um, New Student and Family Programs, also known as NSFP, consists of three staff members and a graduate intern. I'm the director of the area, and as I mentioned, um, Beth is the assistant director of Family Programs, and Kelly Bittner is the assistant director of New Student Programs. We are year-round staff members committed to the successful transition of new students and families into the University of Denver community. And what do we do? Um, our team develops orientation programs for students and families, which I'll describe in a few moments. We provide videos to help you become familiar with different resources available to you and your students. And we have these monthly webinars to help you become familiar with DU and get ready for move-in and orientation. A dedicated email address for parents and families, parents at du.edu. Monthly newsletters during the academic year, Lots of resources for students and their families on our website, crimsonconnect.du.edu slash NSFP, and a Facebook group for parents and families at facebook.com slash groups slash University of Denver Parents. This year, we will host Family Weekend in the spring as we learn more about other university events planned for spring 2021, such as sporting events and other local events happening in our area, we'll make the decision on the date of Family Weekend, and we'll let all of you know. What I can tell you at this time is that we are considering these three weekends, April 10th and 11th, April 17th and 18th, and April 24th and 25th. A really nice thing we just added to our website is a resources link on the top of our page that goes to first year information. And this is a place where you can find billing and payment FAQs, important dates, pioneer ID card info, and other billing and financial resources. So that's a really nice resource for you all. Uh, for student orientation this year, there are nine online modules for students to complete beginning July 6th. The modules will be released weekly so your students will have time to go through each module without rushing through it. Students will move into their residence halls September 7th through 9th. Move-in will be staggered to care for physical distancing, so it could be Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday that your student is assigned to move in. Their assignments will be delivered to them by email July 27th, um, so they'll know exactly what day, what time, and everything. Um, so, you know, you may want to avoid scheduling flights um, up until you know exactly when their move-in is going to be. Um, also, you could look into, I know Southwest has, um, you know, the free change, um, you know, or you could get travel insurance just in case anything changes. Those are some suggestions for you. After moving in on campus, students are going to have in-person orientation programs to attend. Um, so they are going to be busy. Um, the orientation programs on campus are going to be from the 9th all the way through the 12th. And their classes may begin as early as Saturday, September 12th. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, once they get there, they're going to be very busy. So, um, you know, they're going to be meeting other classmates and they're going to be um, finding out what their resources are. So um, that's something that you'll want to keep in mind and not try, you know, to text them too much and, and things like that. Just let them, you know, do what they need to do so that they can get ready to start school. And Family Discoveries will be a completely virtual program throughout the month of August. We will have presentation videos, live streamed events, including a town hall with the Chancellor, meeting the leadership of Student Affairs and Inclusive Excellence, and New Student Convocation, where we officially welcome students to the university. We're going to have um, live breakout sessions with university administrators for families to discuss um, things like academics, careers, health and well-being, and character exploration. 
Um, you're going to have the opportunity to meet the academic leadership through a provost and dean's panel. And this year we're having a virtual book club. So we're really excited to host this discussion on a book by Kelly Ratty called Out to Sea, A Parent's Survival Guide to the Freshman Voyage. She gives really good advice on getting your student and you prepared for starting college in the fall and getting through the first year. So you can either pick up this book at a local store or on Amazon or get it through Kindle and then register for the virtual book discussion with us, which happens on August 15th at 9 a.m. Mountain Time. So um, please get registered for the discussion ahead of time so we know how many people we could potentially have. Um, that'll tell us how many discussion leaders we're going to need. And um, it's at the bottom of the graphic there, but in case you can't see it, the link to get registered for this is HTTPS C-U-T-T dot L-Y slash capital H, lowercase i, lowercase k, the number one, capital M, capital V, capital D. That's kind of a tough one to see, so I thought I would just read that out for you. Um, the last update I have for you right now is on new student registration and academic advising. I'm sure you're all anxious for your student to get registered for classes. Um, registration will be July 20th through the 24th. And to get prepared for that week, students can watch the recording of an academic advising Q&A that was hosted on June 17th, if they weren't watching and participating at the time. Um, that recording, as well as the information on joining the next advising Q&A webinar, um, which is gonna be July 16th, um, you can find all of this information on the new student registration website. And that is www.du.edu slash registrar slash new student slash advising. On that page, students um, can also find different ways to schedule appointments with an academic advisor. There are several videos about the different academic colleges at DU and um, instructional registration videos, FAQs, and a lot of other resources for them. So that covers all of my updates for now. Um, let's go ahead and take some questions. Beth, are you with us? I'm here. Yeah. Great. All right, the first question is, my student may have valuables like a passport that she doesn't feel comfortable keeping in her residence hall. Is there a place to store things safely? Safety deposit box, safe, something like that. Oh, okay, um, great question. Um, the rooms do not have an actual safe in them, but students can bring a safe um, with them. They can rent those. And I need to find out a little bit more information about that. Um, and there may be a resource on the website. So I'm wondering, is Lindsay Patton from Housing on the call with us tonight? I am, hey. Hi, Hi Lindsay, how are you? Good, good. Um, I don't know anything specifically of places like renting safes or anything like that, um, or a place like a central location on campus to store items. Um, I'm trying to think if I've ever heard of any places, but we can definitely um, do some research. If you want to reach out, you can email us at housing at du.edu. Um, and we can always just do a quick Google search and see if there's any places nearby that have worked with students before um, or anything like that. Great, thank you, Lindsay. Yeah. All right, next question. Um, when will students get their registration time slash ticket? Another really good question. Um, that's something that I know that you can find out on that um, new student registration website. I'm not sure exactly when, but I think that's going to go to students by email. And um, I would expect that to also come out to them by the um, week before. You know what, don't take my word for it. <laughs> um, we will find out the answer to that question and we'll post that information when we post the recording of this webinar. It'll be right underneath. If anybody is on the call right now that happens to know the answer to that, um, I'd be happy to enable your microphone. Any of our staff members on there?
I'm not seeing anybody right now. I suppose I can answer as a student myself. Um, oh, hey. Usually, <laughs> in terms of like getting your the registration time and things like that, you can log into Pioneer Web and then go to registration tools and then click as if you were going to register and it will give you a time slot. That's great, Sarah. Thank you very much for that information. You're welcome. All right, next question. Uh, what is the best way to reach an advisor to discuss class options for fall? That would also be on that new student registration website that I just mentioned a moment ago. And if you needed that again, let me just put the page back on there. There's the new student registration website at the bottom of this slide. Next question, do transfer students attend orientation? Yes, transfer students attend orientation. Um, they are with other transfer students, so they will receive a schedule that is specifically made for them. It's not exactly the same as the first year students, of course, because they have um, already been in college. So they have um, a little bit of a different schedule. They won't go over you know, so many of the basics of college on their schedule. It'll be tailored to their experience and they'll get to meet other students that are coming from other institutions as well. You can also find that information um, your students can find that information if they log into um, Pioneer Web. Great. Um, what is the plan for club sports this fall? Will they be happening? And if so, in what capacity? Great question. Um, we don't have any word right now that that won't be happening. We're planning for a return to campus. Um, so I know that there will be more information coming out specifically from the athletics department. Um, I can reach out to another uh, member of athletics and get a little more information if they have some right now. Um, I don't know that there is any change. So club sports, you know, should be happening like normal. And, um, but we'll let you know, we'll put that on the list of things that we can um, follow up with. Okay, can you share the helpful web address that you shared on the first slide? The first slide, um, I think this is probably from our office, or yeah, maybe the Facebook group. I think that might be the one that you're looking for. So a couple of things there. Yeah, for the University of Denver Parent and Family Facebook group, that's the address right there near the bottom. And if you're on Facebook and you um, just go in there and search University of Denver Parents, that's another way to find it. Is that, I'm hoping that's the one that you're referring to. Um, okay, will orientation programming involve parents slash families or is it all student participation? Um, students have a separate program from parents. So the parent program is going to be all throughout the month of August. It's going to be virtual. Um, and then the student program, the students do have orientation modules that they're going to be doing online throughout the summer. And then they have an in-person on-campus program from the 9th to the 12th. So they will have their own separate programming, which does not include their parents. Um, when students are going to be moving in on campus, they're going to be allowed to have two helpers to take their things to the room, um, but there isn't going to be any programming there where parents should stay for the programs. All right, next question. When is the latest an incoming student can ask for a gap year? Before we accepted DU's offer, the admissions rep told us we could ask for a gap year as late as early September. Should the student still apply for housing and register for classes, even if they might still ask for a gap year? That is a great question. I think that's a very specific question about your student's situation. Um, I would go to um, the registrar with that question at um, registrar at du.edu. Do we have another question out there? Yes. 
Um, regarding advisors, my student keeps trying to set up a time with someone um, and is not able to do so. We have no guidance as to who to choose, how to get an appointment, and what to do about picking classes when she has college credit already. Hmm. Um, choosing classes when she has college credit already. Okay, so you, if you're having trouble getting in touch with an advisor and setting up an appointment, um, there is contact information on this website, um, the new student registration website. Um, the advising office, you can email them. Um, there are different ways, different methods of contacting them. Um, telephone number on that page, and it should be um, you know, a fairly easy process to go in and get on their website and schedule that, you know, but um, if you try the advising office and try to get in touch with them and um, you're still having some trouble, email us directly at parents at du.edu and we'll see if we can't, you know, figure out what's going on. All right, the next question is, do we have to accept merit scholarships? I don't believe you have to. Um, being such a specific question, you know, about financial aid, I think that um, it would be best to talk to one of their advisors directly. Um, not to take my advice, I'm not a financial aid advisor. Um, and if you um, send them an email at finaid at du.edu, and give them your student's ID number and their name. Um, they can actually, they can look up the record and talk to you specifically about that merit award and um, give you some helpful advice. The next question is, how will dining halls work next year? Great question. Do we have someone on the call from dining services? I can share a little of what I do know in terms of the dining halls, like since they're in the residence halls. Wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. So from what I know so far, um, Sodexo, who's our food service provider, um, is going to continue with grab and go options the way that we had um, meals for spring quarter for our students who um, couldn't leave campus because they were housing insecure or any reason, um, you know, extenuating circumstance. So um, it'll be grab and go. They will have um, different hours. They're still deciding kind of what that's going to look like. Um, and they will have um, policies where you have to have a mask on or a face covering on to enter the dining areas to get get food and whatnot um, and then they will also keep the dining areas closed so it's more um, grabbing going to your room to eat or you know eating outside or something like that just to encourage that physical distancing um, so far that's what we know but we're hoping to get more information so that when we send out placement emails for first years on July 27th that um, we'll be able to give kind of like a, a good chunk of information on here's what you can expect with fall quarter as well. Great, thank you, Lindsay. Yeah. All right, next question. If we decide to arrive the weekend before move-in to explore Denver, will we be allowed to walk around campus and do our own self-guided tour? I believe that you can um, walk around campus. Um, you won't be able to access any buildings. Um, everything will be closed to the public at that point in time and um, will not be open until the first um, move-in time slot on Monday but you can certainly come and look at it. <laughs> All right, um, where can we find course descriptions, sections, scheduled class times, et cetera? We cannot find any information on freshman seminar. On freshman seven, seminar specifically? Um, okay, um, if you, your student goes into Pioneer Web, I believe that they can go in as if they're uh, to the registration um, portion of Pioneer Web and they can search through there and they should be able to find any of the classes in that location. I know that we have um, a bulletin and at this point, I don't know exactly where that is located. It's on the registrar's website, um, but that's a, a resource that we can give to you later on. But if your student goes in and looks at, the, um, at registration, they should be able to search for classes right there. Um, are students allowed to bring their own mattress? 
Um, also a very good question. Um, Lindsay, do you want to take that one? Yeah, so you you can bring one if you'd like. Sorry if you hear my little puppy barking in the background. <laughs> He's a little upset right now. Um, so you can definitely bring one if you'd like, but we don't remove any furniture from the rooms. So students will have the DU provided mattress in their room and it won't be removed. So if, if you think you can find the space to store it somewhere under the bed or anything like that, we've had students who have brought them. Um, but then we've also had students who just decide to get a pretty um, cushiony um, mattress topper and protector um, and just go that route since it's a little bit easier for them to, to move it in and out and whatnot. Great answer. All right, the next question. I don't suppose you know how the honors floor housing is being impacted. So little bit um, with with themed communities and LLCs and things like that. Obviously with de-densifying, um, communities are gonna look very different um, and we won't be able to house all of the students for what for the honors floor, for example, in one, one specific area per se. Um, I can't remember if they had a final decision between the honors folks and our team on where they um, wanted to, to house students, um, but essentially, what I know at least is that there's going to be much more of a focus on kind of building that virtual community um, through programming and things like that rather than that physical living space, which is going to be a huge learning curve for everyone. Um, it's not ideal, but for safety precautions, obviously, and things like that, um, they will be a little bit more spaced out. But I, I'm sorry, I just can't remember if there was a definitive answer on where they're going to be. Okay, next question. Um, since we are flying down, is there somewhere that we can ship our larger items to hold until arrival? Yeah, great question. Um, not on campus. However, um, there are UPS stores um, nearby and there is a, I think it's called Pack and Ship. Um, it is, you know, right next to the campus. Those stores, um, you can mail something and um, let them know that it's for a DU student and um, they should be able to hold it for you. Uh, make sure that you contact someone at their store, no matter what you choose, and let them know um, what you want to do. Make sure they are the correct store that's closest to campus also. And um, that's one good solution. Another thing that people have done is that if you happen to be um, coming out here the day before, a lot of people are, and they're staying in a hotel that's close by, some of the hotels have a room where they can hold something for you. So, um, you know, if you get in touch with a hotel and every now and then, I don't know how they're handling all of this right now because of COVID-19, um, but in the past, they have had a storage room available for their guests to mail something, you know, one or two boxes or something ahead of time, and they would hold on to it for you. Um, so that's a really good option too, is um, asking the hotel. Um, other than those two options, um, you know, those are the main things that I can think of in the moment. Um, but if I do think of something else, we'll make sure to put that information out there in an email bulletin for you. Okay, um, next question. If a student is not comfortable going to school in the fall, given the COVID-19 situation, what is the process for deferment? Um, that is a very good question. I wish I knew the answer to it immediately. I do not. Um, is there someone on the call on staff who can help us answer that right now? There's an application um, that students can do for that. Um, it's on the, I want to say the admitted students page. Um, I can send the link out for that application. I'm not sure the date that it's due at, um, but I do know that it's like a, an application. And then I think there's like a, uh, there's a $300 tuition deposit um, that has to be submitted for a deferral. Um, so I can send out that link. I have nothing to do with that process, but I do know that that's the link. Um, or there's an application for that that I can uh, send out. Great, thank you very much for responding to that, Ayla. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, next question. Will students only have roommates in suite style rooms? Will places like JMAC and Diamond be exclusively singles? Yes, so um, JMAC Halls and DeMond Family Residential Village, a mouthful, uh, DFRV, will all be single rooms. Centennial Towers will be suite style, as will Nagel, and um, a portion of that is uh, bathroom situations, right, rather than having um, 30 plus students sharing one bathroom or two bathrooms if it's a co-ed floor. Um, in the suite styles, you've only got a max of four students sharing those spaces, um, and so cleaning touch points and things like that are going to be a lot more feasible um, and, and work to keep people safer. So yep, uh, JMAC Halls, DFRB singles, and then um, Nagel and Towers will be double suite style. All right, I heard that all students will talk, sorry, I heard that all students will talk to their advisors before registration. Is this true and do they need to contact someone for an appointment? I know they are going to have communication from advisors and direction on how to reach out and make appointments. Um, they can be proactive about that by going to the website and um, making, you know, um, using their online system uh, to make the appointment or um, they can, you know, wait to see, you know, what their um, registration um, time is. And I know that in that same email, when they receive that from the advising office, they will give instructions on how to reach out to someone. I believe that I heard in, um, in that webinar that they are going to reach out, but um, again, you know, unless there's somebody here on the call tonight that can actually, you know, give a definitive answer, I wouldn't take my word on that, you know, that they'll definitely be reaching out to every student. I don't know, you know, how that proactive outreach is going to work um, with the number of students we have coming in. So um, I think that's something that we'll also follow up on if nobody else is on the call and able to give us that answer immediately. Yep, I think that's what we're gonna end up doing, okay. Okay, um, there's some confusion about roommates. My student is in, a, is in PLP and wanted a roommate but believes he cannot have one, is this true? Um, so PLP, depending on, and again, I can't remember if they made a definitive decision on what building they're going to be in, um, but typically PLP is housed in JMAC, and JMAC is going to be a building that has singles only. Um, so in those cases, um, with PLP, we work pretty closely with their coordinators to um, get lists of roommates and things like that in a, in a non-COVID year. Um, and so this year, I think they're working to try and see, okay, these are the students who would have roomed together. Um, can we get them next to each other, close to each other, things like that. Um, last I heard that was still a work in progress and um, our team and their team were working together, together, excuse me, to figure out the best course of action, um, communicating that out and things like that. But yes, if PLP is going to be in JMAC halls or DFRV, those will be singles only. So students who um, signed up for roommates will have single rooms and we'll try to place them as close to one another as possible so that they're still able to be close to one another and communicate and build those connections as much as possible. Okay, next question. Um, when is orientation for the LAP program? Great question. Um, orientation for the LEP program, I believe, is going to be a virtual um, program. Um, and they should be reaching out to you. If they um, haven't already reached out to your student about this, they will be reaching out to um, parents and families to give more information on the programming. Um, we can find out some information for you on that as well and put that into our follow-up from today. If, unless we have someone on the call, again, who can come forward and um, share some of that information with us. All right, I don't hear any staff members right now, so we will follow up with that one.
All right. Um, there was a request I saw that said, um, as we're talking about the acronyms, if we could just, um, you know, mention what exactly they are, because <laughs> it's hard to keep up with some of the acronyms we're using. Um, is next question? Is there a special advising Q and A for undecided majors, or will the advising Q and A webinar address that? Um, there is actually, um, I believe it's in a video on the new student registration website. Um, the different academic colleges, they did videos specifically about their area, and I believe that other areas, um, such as an undeclared student or, um, you know, something that's not covered under those academic colleges, I believe that they also had a separate video, so you should be able to find more information there. Um, I don't think they'll have a separate live webinar. Um, I think that everything, you know, can get answered on the advising webinar. Um, Q&A if you um, were to get in touch with them um, or to join that webinar, you know, they'll take any questions that you have about that. And um, to go back to the um, uh, previous mention of the acronyms, um, PLP is Pioneer Leadership Program, and that's a specific program that um, students, some students have joined. So if you are unfamiliar with that um, that uh, title, Pioneer Leadership Program, then your student is probably not part of that program. I just wanted to make sure and mention what PLP is briefly. Do you have another question? Yes, is it possible to rent a refrigerator? Good question. Lindsay, you wanna take that? Yeah, um, so the rooms will have micro fridges in them, they come um, in each of the rooms. Students can definitely bring like an additional mini fridge if they want. We just ask for nothing like super, you know, much larger than, I don't even know what a standard kind of size mini fridge is just because sometimes it can short off the circuits, especially in our older buildings. Um, but they do have pretty decently sized mini fridge for their room that also has a freezer component. Um, and then, um, I lost my train of thought, so sorry. <laughs> um, oh, and then also um, microwaves with the exception, um, DFRV, Demond Family Residential Village will have them in their student lounges in each of their um, pods, which is like their little grouping of student rooms. Um, but they will have fridges still in the rooms themselves. All right, uh, this next question, I think Lindsay, you can stay online. Is there an on-campus storage area for ski equipment? or does it have to be in their dorm room? Also, what about bike storage? Is everything outside covered or uncovered? Yeah, um, bike storage, to the best of my knowledge, I'm thinking through all of our buildings, is uncovered and outside, but you can use um, any of the bike racks. Um, you do need a, um, I believe they're called U-locks, um, that um, are standard just to keep your bikes as safe as possible. Um, in terms of storage rooms, they will have to keep them in their rooms themselves. Um, Centennial Towers does have um, storage rooms that can be shared by the suites. We haven't talked about kind of what that checkout process is going to look like for fall quarter. Um, just you know, because they're storage rooms next to one another. And so just, again, just keeping um, distance and, and things like that. So um, it is an option in towers, but in other spaces, students will just keep them under their beds. Or um, in JMAC, I know some students will keep them up above their closet. There's a little space that some students will put their luggage and whatnot or their suitcases. Um, and I've seen students be able to fit um, skis and snowboards and things like that up there as well. Thank you. Um, are parents expected to leave after move-in or will there be any programming for us between September 9th and 12th? Um, there will not be any programming for parents September 9th through 12th. And um, yes, that is the expectation that you're there um, if you want to help your students to move in and um, you know, get settled. I believe there's going to be a time frame for that also, but we'll know a lot more about that um, by July 27th. Um, and, you know, two people can help students um, move in, but no, there isn't going to be any parent programming on the campus grounds. How and where can my student register her car and get a parking spot? 
Oh, okay. Um, parking and mobility services um, is the place to go to get a parking permit. You would go to the website du.edu slash parking. All right, where on the website can we verify that you have received official transcripts? Um, that would also be a question for the registrar. Um, there may be an easier way to do that, I don't know. And um, Janet, if you're with us, I just gave you permission to use your microphone. I think that might have been something we needed to do for you. Would you be able to answer that question? No, maybe she doesn't have her microphone enabled. Okay, um, but yes, that is what I would suggest is um, students may be able to log into Pioneer Web and um, see that on the student tab, I believe that they can see um, transcripts on there. Um, if they cannot find it, I believe that they can verify that through the registrar's office, registrar at du.edu. Um, how do we get tuition insurance? Tuition insurance. That's a very good question. And I'm going to go to one of our members here um, in the Bursar's office. Janet, are you able to enable your microphone? Okay. I don't know what's happening. We have some technical difficulties here. <laughs> um, that is not something that I have um, heard of, but um, I think we will follow up on that one. It looks like in the chat box, Janet is saying that they do not offer, that we do not offer tuition insurance through DU. Oh, okay, wonderful. Thank you very much for that info, Janet. Um, another request to display the first slide with multiple dates. Ah. I believe that's the one that you're referring to. Um, let me just look at the first one real quick. Yep, that's the one, there you go. Um, my student is insisting that they need a car. Do most first year students have cars? Some do. Um, they become best friends with people really quickly. Um, <laughs> some of the students will bring a car um, if they have a job that is off campus or if they need um, to visit a doctor that is off campus and they have a tight time schedule. That's um, a really good reason for them to have one. All students do have a transportation pass, so they're able to move about the city for free on public transportation. There's a light rail station right on the north end of campus, and it's and we have bus stops um, around the campus area. So it's really easy to get around in that way, public transportation. Um, but of course, you know, if you would like for your student to have a car for the convenience, that's um, entirely up to you. The only thing that I would suggest on that is to make sure that you do get a parking permit from Parking and Mobility Services. Um, it's possible to park a few blocks away from campus. It is definitely not ideal, um, definitely not a long-term option. Plus, in um, those neighborhoods, we have street sweeping and we have snow removal. So they are very, it's patrolled by a city of Denver. So they're really um, watchful about, you know, the cars that are parked there for a long time and especially about the ones that are parked there during the street sweeping times and the snow removal times. I wouldn't suggest any long-term option to be parking on the street. Um, definitely, you know, you'll want to look into getting a parking permit if your student brings a car to campus. For shots that are needed, if my student gets them tomorrow and puts the documents in, will that work? My student is also a transfer and will she be a part of orientation? 
that we already covered. Um, yes, I believe that's fine. I was just looking through my notes here um, that you'll want to make sure that you provide all of your students immunization records because students aren't going to be able to register for classes if the Health and Counseling Center has not received their records or other supporting documentation. So you can email those records to info at hcc.du.edu or fax them to 303-871-4242. And you can find more information about immunization requirements on the Health and Counseling Center's website, which is du.edu slash du health. What you do on that page is you click on medical services tab at the top of the page then once you're on the medical services page, look for immunization on the left side menu. Okay, next question. Can you share the plan for housing taking COVID into consideration? Lindsay, do you wanna take that one? I can certainly take a shot. Um, so, <laughs> Part of our process has been de-densifying, which I feel like most people know about. Um, so our first year communities, like I said, will be Johnson McFarland Hall or JMAC, um, Centennial Halls, um, Centennial Towers, and DeMond Family Residential Village, and then um, some spaces in Nagel Hall as well, um, which we kind of talked about a little bit earlier. We're still working with senior leadership and submitting proposals and things like that on what um, isolation will look like. They've asked us, uh, we have a building called Hilltop on campus. That's um, it's an older building that's apartment style. Um, and that's what we've proposed as kind of um, isolation spaces if a student does fall ill. Um, you're approaching the you know worst case scenario, what will happen if there is an outbreak um, or if we get a much larger uptake in cases in the state and kind of what that's going to look like. I don't have any solid concrete answers on that for you right now um, and I don't want to give you any estimations or predictions and it'd be wrong. I've been I don't have great luck with predicting properly with um, with things like that. So um, right now um, decreasing the amount of students that are in uh, sharing public spaces, um, working on a process for students who do fall ill, um, as well as making sure that um, any suite mates or roommates, if they have them, are uh, taken care of, have proper information, um, you know, monitoring their symptoms if they have any, things like that. Um, and then we're also working on communications to send out to students both before they check in so that you all and your students have that information before you get to campus. Um, we'll, we're working on an automatic uh, welcome email that will go on, uh, out once the student checks in that will um, have information for them on, you know, here's what you can do if this, you know, if you feel ill or anything like that. Um, and then also communications to send out if there is a, like a student can, has a confirmed positive case um, and how that'll affect them and any roommates or suite mates that they have. I think that was great, Lindsay. Thank you. All right. Um, next question. We had to cancel two trips to see campus due to COVID. We would like our daughter to see um, campus before we move her in and thinking about visiting the last week of July. How open is Denver and will we be able to see campus and downtown? Do you know if state parks are open? A really great question. Um, of course, we won't know until the time comes. Um, exactly what the state of Denver is going to be. Um, you know, right now we are fairly open. Um, we're doing pretty well, although we have had um, an uptick in cases. You know, those have increased and just like a lot of places, they haven't gone up very high, but they are continuing um, on a regular basis, like in a lot of places. Um, you know, to say what it's going to be like on campus uh, even a week from now would be a difficult thing to do. Um, we are all in this boat. Um, we're thinking about when we are going to be able to go back to campus as well and thinking about what the experience is going to be for our students. 
and we want to be back on the campus. Um, we would like to, you know, be there to go check into our offices and things like that too. And we just um, aren't able to do that yet. So um, as far as getting onto the campus and taking a look around, um, certainly you can go um, look around right now. Um, the city isn't shut down. We're definitely not in a stay at home order kind of place right now. Um, but the buildings on campus will be closed. There wouldn't be a way for you, even though you would see some people, some staff members working there at the time in certain places, you still wouldn't be able to just ask really quickly to go in. That's not going to be something that could happen. Everything is locked. Um, so until Monday of move in on September 7th, we wouldn't be able to let in, anyone into the buildings. Um, although, you know, seeing the campus would be really nice. And um, we, you know, on the website, we do have a few videos of campus and, um, you know, different ways for you to see it, but I know that's not the same. Um, you want to be there and you want to take a look at it. So it's, of course, really hard to say what the state of things are going to be like, you know, even a week from now, especially at the end of July. And we unfortunately just need to hang in there and um, wait and hope for things to get better. Um, next question, when will Greek life begin for new students? That's a really good question. When will it begin? I believe it's going to be, is anybody um, from the staff on the call right now that has been in DU Greek life? Okay, doesn't seem like there is a staff member right now that can talk about that specifically, but we can take that question back to um, our Office of Student Engagement, Fraternity and Sorority Life, and um, get that question answered for you. Good question. Um, will those who move in early in the three-day process have anything scheduled? Those who move in early. Oh, I see. Um, so, if, for example, if you have a Monday morning move in, will there be something else scheduled? We are working on that, actually. Um, you know, we're thinking about what kind of programming we could put in place for students, regardless of when they've checked in, so that it could be an alternate programming. Um, they can go, you know, to at uh, Monday afternoon and then Monday evening. And then for those students moving in on Tuesday, same kind of thing. You know, there will be other programming taking place to um, give them some social opportunities and some things to do. So that is in the works and um, we'll definitely let you know as soon as we figure out what we're going to be doing. Um, next question, do you have an idea of how many junior transfer students are expected this year? I know that the last number that I saw, I don't know about um, juniors because we do have some coming in at sophomore status, um, but I believe that we're, we're usually hovering right around about 150 total transfer students. I believe that's where we are um, at this point in time, um, unless somebody else on staff knows that to be different. The numbers do keep going up, transfer student numbers keep going up. I don't hear anybody else. Nope. Okay. So yeah, it's um, right around um, 150, but that consists of both second year students and junior students. And maybe even some at, at senior status, who knows, but I don't know the status of all of them right now. Um, some colleges are ending the quarter early and finishing it out online. Will do you be doing the same or will it be in person? Great question. Um, now, if somebody knows differently, um, this is what I remember from one of the latest conversations that we had is that we were going to end the quarter right before the fall um, break. Classes in person would stop um, right before that, like what's traditionally the Thanksgiving area. That's usually when we take our six weeks. But I believe that students are going to have their finals that week after at home. It's going to be an online environment that they'll be doing finals. That was the last that I heard. Um, that was the last communication um, that um, I read. 
and if anybody else is here on the call that can enable their microphone and talk about that specifically and let me know if I am incorrect with that. Nope, I don't think so. <laughs> um, so we'll put that on the list of things that we need to confirm for you. Um, next question, when will freshmen get their housing assignments? That'll July. be July 27th. Yeah. Okay. Um, When registering for parking, how can we ensure a space close to the dorm for a transfer student? When you're looking for a parking permit online um, through that through their office, um, you have the choice of choosing which parking lot. Um, I believe that you know the most desirable parking lots really close by are priced in different ways. Um, so you'll want to take a look at the different areas. The campus is relatively easily walkable. Um, if your student is walking. Um, you know, there is um, an accessible parking lot um, pretty close by and, um, you know, it's pretty easy, pretty quick to get around from place to place. Um, but I understand that there's also a safety issue with that. You want them to have a parking lot that's pretty close to their residence hall. Um, so if you're looking at the parking website, you can choose the different parking lots and you can see the different prices for those different areas um, when you purchase the permit. And you can also email them or give them a call um, and you know, ask the question about you know, what's most convenient for my student if they're living in this area, um, you know, what would you suggest? And they can help you with that. Um, when will students find out what residence hall they will be assigned? That'll be July 27th in that same email. Um, do we know yet what class sizes will look like given what's going on with COVID, both in regards to labs and lectures? Um, we do not know yet. Um, I know that the classrooms are being modified um, for uh, you know, the required physical distance. And um, although we already have small class sizes in general, there are very few classes that have very large numbers on our campus. Those we're, going, we're still in discussion about, you know, exactly which courses are, you know, certainly going to be online because if we have, let's say, 100 people to care for, that's something that is not reasonable with physical distancing requirements. So that would be one example. But most of the classes on our campus um, are going to be um, between 10 and 15 students. So, you know, the classrooms, like I said, they're being modified to care for that, and um, they're gonna have plenty of space. Question about move-in day. So parents should plan on helping the student and then leaving immediately after our student is moved in? Yes. Yes, that is the suggestion. Um, we wanna minimize the number of people who are going to be um, on the campus grounds. We want to keep you and your students as safe as possible. Um, and we will have many people moving in at various times of the day. We'll have, you know, time slots that will be coming up. So I believe that it's going to be two hours. Lindsay, if I'm not correct on that, let me know. Um, but I think it's about a two hour time window that we're discussing. No, you're right. <laughs> okay, okay. And um, that is the suggestion also is to go ahead and help them out if you'd like to stay and help and to get them moved into the room. But then we want to also make sure that we minimize the number of people because as you are leaving, if you're right there up to that two hour time limit, there will be an influx of people coming in at their next time slot. So just think about all of that, you know, and as you're planning your day, planning that for that timing. Um, you know, just to give everyone else coming in that extra space and that extra time to also get through the doorways and upstairs and up elevators and things like that. Can you talk a little bit about campus safety? We haven't heard much about that on webinars. Okay, great. Um, Commander Holt was um, part of the 
the staff invited tonight. I was wondering, Commander, are you here? I am. Can you hear me? Um. <laughs> so we are a uh, unarmed uh, campus safety and security department. Uh, we have a 24 member staff. We work 24 seven. We also have a 24 seven dispatch center. Uh, we answer all kinds of calls for service. Uh, we work uh, hand in hand with the Denver police. So if there are some calls that we can't handle, uh, we uh, call in our friends with uh, Denver police for assistance. As far as uh, crime and safety, we just recommend that you, um, you know, follow all of the um, established guidelines for safety as far as uh, walking in groups and, uh, you know, looking out for your fellow student and that sort of thing. Um, we are in an urban environment and, you know, uh, this, the same things happen in a mid to a uh, large size city happens in the city of Denver. Is there any specific questions that I can answer on campus safety? I don't think that we have anything else that's um, specific about that, but I think that gives some really um, good insight to the campus safety office and um, the resources for students. So thank you, Commander. Um, has there been any discussion of requiring quarantine prior to coming onto campus and will there be COVID testing administered to students on a regular basis? I know that we will have COVID testing available for students on campus and I don't know what the um, process is going to be just yet. We will share a lot more about that as those discussions are coming to a close and some decisions are being made. I know that before students come to campus, um, they're going to be um, filling out information um, as a, a health screening, for example, to let us know how they're feeling. And um, we are also discussing taking temperatures upon students entering the campus grounds. Um, I would imagine that all of the campus residents, hall doors, anyone that comes in the door is probably also going to be asked to, um, to have their temperature taken. Um, this again is something that is um, currently, you know, under discussion and we're going to have more information to share with you about that when the um, the you know decision process is completed. Lindsay, do you have anything else to add to that? Um, yeah, you know, I mean, you pretty much. Whoops, sorry, you pretty much covered most of it. We we've requested, you know, we've proposed a couple of things like, hey, um, can we have them fill out surveys? You know, at least two weeks prior to arrival. Um, can we get thermometers so that we can take their temperature when they get here? Everything's still kind of in the planning stages, but we have proposed multiple different kinds of um, what's the word I'm looking for processes. We're just waiting on kind of that final like we can go ahead with this one, this one, or this one. So um, in progress, but yes, we have suggested it and uh, requested it. Great, thanks, Lindsay. Okay, um, last question. If I was dual enrolled in high school, um, how will this affect my class registration? If you were dual enrolled in high school, how does that affect? I'm not sure I understand the question completely, but um, what it sounds like to me is that that would be a question for an advisor. Um, so it would be a good idea to visit that new student registration website and look up how to schedule an appointment with an advisor um, to ask that specific question, and they can help you figure that out. And um, we are um, just at time, so I want to be respectful of everyone else's time. I know that um, you know you may have other questions. You can certainly email those to us at parents at du.edu. And we will be getting back to you with some answers on the questions that we couldn't answer in the moment. Um, I wanna thank you again for taking time and joining us tonight. Our next Q&A is going to be on August 1st at 6 p.m. Mountain Time.
on that webinar, we're going to get into the practical stuff. It's going to be more down in the detail. What should your student bring or not bring to campus when they move in? Um, exactly how staggered move-in is going to work, um, where to pull up at the residence halls and unload the car before you park, um, how your student is going to get checked in and get their keys and ID. All of those really practical things are going to be happening on the August 1st webinar. And um, for now, we are going to go ahead and sign off again. Thank you so much for joining us, and we hope to see you next time. Have a good evening, everybody.